consequences. And, that, and that's it. And I'm not here to condemn women. I am them, right? I had a child when I was very young, How young? by someone who I didn't really know that well. Uh-oh. And I'll, he said something to me that instead of taking it like as a victim, I took it as a learning tool. And mm-hmm. I'm glad that I did. I think he kind of stood me up maybe for like a couple of things that we were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, we need to spend more time together. We're getting ready to have a baby. You know, this man told me, <laughs> don't you think we should have did that before you got pregnant? Bingo. <laughs> and at first I was taken aback because I was like, how dare you? You laid down and made a baby with me too. I've been knowing you for as long as you've been knowing me. Okay. So how dare you come at me? But once I let that initial sting go away, no matter if I didn't like it or it was mean spirited or whatever, it was true. And so once he said that to me, it like set off something in my brain that was like, nobody's ever going to say that to me again. Mm. Is this being a pick me? No, it's, it's being smart. And is what is the message that we've had since day one on this pod, man. You know, people find it weird to have a baby with somebody that they just met, you know, in three months. But God forbid you say, oh, well, you should settle down and, you know, be married first. You know, all of a sudden, they're like, oh, that's weird. Y'all barely know each other. Facts. Bring your mic up closer. Like, we're going to lift it up. Yeah, it, it is crazy. Um, Nothing is scarier. And I'm not talking about her. Um, And I'm just talking about life. Nothing is scarier. Um, Excuse me. I'm not even talking about the fact that I already have a kid and I've been here. But nothing is scarier when you hear people say they had a kid with somebody they did not know. I understand people change once a baby I understand people change once they get married and once a baby come. I do get that. Um, I've changed since I've gotten married. I've changed since I've had a baby. Same with my wife. Um, however, when people say, I didn't know this person, bro, that shit is scary. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's probably a lot of the judgment that comes because somebody's like, you're like, Hi, okay, so you didn't know him, mm. right? But you, y'all were just smashing raw all the way to your ovulation one. Nah, long that took. It was, they, she got pregnant off pre-com. <laughs> How many times have you heard that? Yo, man, I got I got a pregnant <laughs> nigga. What? Uh, I, mean, I love that one. Yeah, it's possible, but, you know, not How many times it. have you Googled, can she get pregnant? Or, when, you, when you was starting to have sex, y'all ain't have Google. No, we did not have Google. <laughs> <laughs> we did not have Google. <laughs> oh, but, I mean, we do that, you, you know, the, the, the story is you can get pregnant off a pre-com, but. I mean, I mean, but there's a lot of stuff that we really didn't learn. You know, ovulation windows. Like, I mean, pretty much when we was growing up, it was kind of, it was kind of this ideal of, a, you know, if you have sex with a woman, she can get pregnant, right, at mm. any given time. And that simply is not true, right? I mean, you, we could try to, we could try to negotiate around it all we want, but like, yo, if there's no egg there, there's no baby to be to be had. Um, does that have to do with you grew up? We know you grew up in the church, but does that have to also do with your time of people just? Scaring people into abstinence Well no because in church no one talked About sex at all in church so no This is is school so I I Don't even think it was like scaring into abstinence Because when I when I was growing up teenage Pregnancy started being a thing like it started You know that's when they they really start focusing On it Mm -hmm. so it was more about Wearing condoms back then than it was About like not having sex So I want to I won't even blame it on that I just I really I really think It was just giving women that out of You can get pregnant at any time yeah. Right. Um, do you feel like you think before you answer this? Did sister steal your sauce? Your theories? I you know what? Did she dress it up even better than you? She yeah, that's dressed up a little bit better. You know, cause she was accountable, right? She was just like, and Yo, she pretty. That's oh, that's that's on me. And I was like, you know, I, I appreciate a woman actually saying, like, no, I got pregnant and you know what? That that was on me. Mm. But, you know, again, like I, I think I think that I think in our in the black community, we really do need to just stop the out of wedlock baby thing. I think if we stop the out of wedlock baby things, it'll stop the gender wars, it'll stop the violence that we have in our community, it'll stop the irresponsibility that we have in our community. If we just stop having out of wedlock kids, um, <laughs> poverty, like I think it just fixed so many things. Facts, education levels, yeah, education levels, like it just I, working, saving money, like it just it's something that as a community we really should just. Stop it. I did a photo shoot this weekend of a mom and she brought her two friends, you know, her friends that came. One was a guy. One was a girl. Um, both of them was all three of them was teachers. And so we were sitting there and she said they're high school teachers. And yeah. she said, yeah, uh, one of the parents called me concerned. They said, we don't. Our kid never has homework. <laughs> and she said, 
You know what's so sad, Gavin? I said, what? She said, we don't get these kids homework because they don't do the schoolwork in school. Yeah. We don't send them to a place where we definitely know they ain't going to do homework <laughs> with. And I just thought she said, and then she said it. She said, if these kids had parents and she put an S at the end for yeah. a reason, she was like, if they, if we knew that their parents will make them do the work that they don't do at school. Yeah. Like she was like, the shit is just insane. Um, I do believe that if anything, I do believe um, if we eliminate out of wedlock kids, um, excuse me, having babies out of wedlock. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, y'all was about to lose LeBron and Barack in one fell swoop. I was about to hit the Thanos button on their ass. Um, <laughs> look, look, man. Um, but if we if we did this the right way, you know what it is? Communication be better. I can't imagine. Let me tell you, me and my wife, we don't have gender wars. Um, because black issues, she just accepts or understands or. Seeks to listen yeah. uh, Browns Brown issues Things I have no idea about I sit there And sit and listen But when we do have Like a gender conversation It is always all right. why do you feel this way Give me your feelings I give her Why I feel this way Give my feelings And then it's kind of like Alright cool Like we got yeah. that out I can understand more Where you coming from You understand more Where I'm coming from Cool But when it's like I go home and it's dark and there's no woman there. Um, or if I go home and it's dark and there's no man there, I just get to hop on Twitter and get that feeling of sensation that everybody agrees with me. Yeah, that, that company, man. And, and like I said, like I, I, you know, low key, I'm like, ah, you know, this message sounds familiar. Um, but I mean, <laughs> hell, we've been preaching it for five years now. So I'm, I'm glad that the message is getting out there. Shout out to the message. Um, I want to welcome everybody to episode 124. 120 we are moving i had somebody reach out to me um and ask me how many episodes we have and i was like well we're on episode 124 but it's a couple missing so <laughs> and they laughed at that um i do want to welcome everybody into the black dads club this is the pastor this is his congregation i am just an announcement reader um like working reader. to be deacon gavin Oh, I want to be an usher. Usher? Yeah. Nah, we're going to promote you to deacon. Man. Deacon Gavin. Give, De- some, give you some more responsibility. If you read your Bible and you see the responsibilities of a deacon, <laughs> it is too much that I'm willing to look, man. Give you some more responsibilities, man. <laughs> see, that's the problem with some of y'all, especially y'all horny ass pastors. Y'all did not read the responsibilities of said jobs in the church. Nah, man. They wanted that attention. They never got that attention from their pops growing up and their mama. So they like, I'm going to be in the pulpit. I remember one time my dad made me, when he was becoming a deacon, he made me read the responsibilities. I literally in high school, I mean, excuse me, I was in middle school. I looked at him. I said, you sure you want to do this? <laughs> like the, the responsibilities just seem too great. Um, I do want to welcome y'all in. I would, you know what? Um, I don't have a dad tip, but I don't think I would say, man, is protect your peace. Protect your home, protect your peace. Oh, man. You know, that that's a good segue to the end of the pod. Because <laughs> we're going to talk about that at the very, very end. That yeah. Protecting your home, protecting your peace. But you got to, man. Um, I see a lot of fellas out there. Um, falling into the traps, and it's a lot, especially for black but men. But we're not. I mean, that's the thing. It's like once you. So I, I had a conversation with a, a buddy of mine, and like he's going through it in his home, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, he's 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 trying to you know get shit back in order, basically, mm-hmm. for lack of a better word. And one of the things that I told him, I was like, "You right, but you wrong." Mm. And he was like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "Yo, everything that you're trying to do is the right thing." I said, but for the last 10 years, you've allowed X, Y, and Z exactly. to occur. And yep. now you're trying to correct it. And now you're being upset about it. I was like, yeah, you're right. I said, but you would have had to do that 10 years ago. Facts. So I was like, you wrong to be like pissed off because things aren't going the way you want it to go. Well, for 10 years, you allowed that to happen. And I mean, again, that's responsibility. That's accountability. That's mm-hmm. why nobody calls me for advice because I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> so, yeah, protecting your peace is a, a huge part of it. But some of us are so many of us. We get involved before we've we've truly vetted. And then before that. And then, you know, that cement dries and now you stuck. You stuck. You know, yeah. whether it's a kid, whether it's marriage, whether it's a mortgage, you know, whether it's y'all to move to, you know, the middle of nowhere together and neither one of y'all could get back to where you from. Like, yo, and that cement dry, like, yo, you got to make the best of it, man. So, yeah, protect your peace, man, and start start doing a better job up front. Please start doing a better job up front. Uh, Please check out. Please go on YouTube. Check out. I just did an interview with uh Trey. Talks with Trey. He was the first gay dad who I sat down with. Very interesting conversation. I did bring up. It would have been good if you was there because you know what I brought up. That I was what? like, damn, Mike would have loved to have this conversation with him. Um, how a how being gay comes before them being black. 
Oh yeah, I would love that. So what did he say to that? Uh, he said, "Well, you know what? Me and him had this conversation. And I think it was a reoccurring thing that hey, I don't represent everybody. Um, I and so I had to tell him I don't represent every straight man that's out there. He had to let me know he don't represent." Every homosexual man. And I say that to say, he says no black for him always comes first, but he said he can't speak for everybody else. Okay. Because um, that, 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 is, that is a reoccurring term. Because that, that term means theme, not yeah. term. But because at the end of the day, I don't I don't understand when anybody is anything before they're black. Yeah. Right? Like, like hey, this is how society sees you. So it does irk the hell out of me whenever y'all get online and y'all are this before you're black, mm-hmm. right? That that irks the hell out of me. And I don't I don't care I don't care what organization you will. I don't care what letters you choose to represent you. Mm-hmm. I don't care what your education level is. For African Americans in this country to be anything before they're black, yeah. Despite how this country sees you, I that that shit blows me. This yeah. this country treated vape cocaine like it was murder. Facts. <laughs> and then when they came to black tar heroin. Everybody was a victim. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, this country is clear on how it sees you. So for any, to me, it's such a lack of understanding that when I see somebody that said, well, I'm this before I am a black man, because I really don't talk to black men, but this includes yeah. black women too. That irks me. And like, yeah, I like I like to dive into it. I don't, because I don't care who you are. I don't care what your, what your we, orientation we is, had that what conversation. your education is. We had that conversation yeah. about how it bothers them that we don't care. We had that conversation. <laughs> Uh, I, need, I need to watch this. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. We, I do not care who you boink. I yeah. Don't. Well, and, and so we had that conversation. I will say this: he put his foot down about Lil Nas X. Oh, we're gonna get there. We're gonna we get don't, there. We I, 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 I want to yeah. hear what he. I want to hear what he said. Then <laughs> he supported my man. And shout out to Trey. You let me tell you why I say shout out to Trey. And this is what guests have to understand, especially if you come on here and we sit down. Uh, Trey sent this out. Uh, this video. Out last night in the football game, he showed me the group chat, and they was going in in a group chat. He sent it out to like twenty people. Oh yeah, he's like, I need you to watch this right now, and I'm watching the numbers, and it ain't no watch for five minutes, cut out, no. Yeah. And and I told him I was like, yo, thank you, <laughs> because a you understand what we trying to build over here. Yes. Um, B, you a father. Yep. And see, he he said, hey, I think, and I told him, I said, I told him off mic and I told him on mic. I said, look, certain things me and Mike just don't want to get into because we don't, we can't have those debates. And he said, okay. I said, but I'm glad I got you here because I got all these questions. <laughs> so we talked about the barbershop. We talked about the Delta employee. We talked about uh, misgendering people. And like, he talked about, yo, we confused. <laughs> But it was good, and and you know one thing I get a trade was yeah some of that shit I was saying he was like nah bro we're not I don't I'm not I'm not agreeing with you on that yeah. and he pushed back but please go check it out I'm encouraging everybody um nonetheless uh most deaf y'all do this to Drake every couple of times and you know what I'm not saying I'm mad at it but I do think it's interesting but let's get to yeah the- we're gonna have to talk about most deaf versus Drake like that that is the internet. Combo. For for no reason. Um, let me get to where is this video at? Uh, da, 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 da. Is Drake hip hop? <laughs> Drake is pop to me. In the sense like if I was in Target in Houston and I heard a Drake song. It feels like a lot of his music is compatible with shopping. Mm. And then she laughed. She got him. She got him. Commercial music. Or as or as Commercial you know, music. shopping with an edge in certain instances. Fair. I like Drake's music, but I understand exactly what you're saying. I like her skin tone. I, 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 her skin is pretty. Uh hold on. Y'all get the gist. Y'all have heard it by now. I like her skin tone. And I'm 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 sharing, I'm sharing something. I like her skin tone. Her skin is nice, it's moisturized, it's smooth. These pretty girls allow y'all to get on these podcasts and they line y'all the fuck up. I wrote this on Poor Minds in a comment section. Y'all are lining up women. Yeah. And and it's suddenly it's men's fault. Oh, it's it's always men's fault because because we're pointing it out. But uh so let let let's be clear here, all right? The question was asked, you know, I I don't I don't think it was as spontaneous as we've made it out to be on this video. Mm. Um I think I think she wanted most to take a shot. I mean, he doesn't. He we know him as most. He goes by something else now. So we're yeah. not. Last we're not. Bay. Yeah, we're not misnaming him. We just everybody knows him as most. So yeah. Um, but yeah, it, that was a little bit of a shot. And here's okay. You can't say Drake's not hip hop. 
Right. Drake is mm-hmm. hip hop. Drake first two albums, it, it that was the solidifying from the old school to the new school. That was almost twenty years ago. But go ahead. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, <laughs> so you, you stopped being hip hop because it was 20, 20 years ago. Like it's, you know, that would ruin the whole eighties then because none of those dudes made albums in the nineties. Go ahead, man. I got you. Yeah. And so to say, you know, is Drake hip hop? <laughs> right. Drake. He brought the sound. Right. He brought the sound of R and B and rap. Together, okay, because that people have been trying to do that forever. Yeah, right. We're talking about the New Jack Swing era. Uh, R. Kelly did his best impression of it. Mm-hmm. Best of both worlds, was, was, you know, was, was like everybody tried to merge those two sounds. Uh, Fifty Cent's uh, probably why he hate Ja Rule because Ja Rule did a better job at it mm-hmm. than he did. And Drake, when he Drake first two albums, he finally merged it mm-hmm. to where it was something that was cool. It was something that was completed. It was something that was done. And those first two albums are really good. Like one of, one of the best first two album drops of a new artist that you, we we've seen. It's up there with Outkast and no no no, no no Kanye. I'm like not not like Only. yeah. <laughs> Like either not like not too many people get two albums that drop. Yeah, no facts that facts. are that are that heralded. So because you don't like him now, because he's become problematic now, right? Like we can't be like, well, he's more pop than mm. hip hop. Uh, I think Drake is a pop artist, uh, and I don't think it's a problem with that. I believe that we have to understand what pop means, and pop means popular. Yeah, and I think that hip hop. Um, once was said that hey You know who made that bullshit statement When y'all was younger uh, hip hop has bo- Done more damage to the Urban communities than racism Somebody said yeah, that I, I, I don't uh, know. It's a great quote I love probably, when they probably, play probably, probably some black conservative I'm sure now, I think it was George Bush or somebody you know, Robert uh, Nixon. A real conservative oh. yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> but I love when the no. church used to play that all the time When they didn't want us to listen to uh, you know yeah. Ludacris um, But I say this For a genre that was supposed to Fizzle out. It is the most copied, sought out there. Uh, they getting life insurance policy on you. Well, and and, this, like, and and that's why I don't like when we when we question is, is an artist pop or hip hop because I now I know that we're about to lose that music genre. Oh like, yeah, like, we how, don't. Like, how, like how many times have we have, have have we seen this? Like just in the history of music, and it's because we don't own anything. We don't own any of the music. Mm-hmm. We don't own any. Of the I think that might go to most depths. Point. And, and and I and and that is but I think he still took a shot, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But take but it. I but I think that was his point of hip hop is dying because I went and went back and listened to it. And hip hop is dying, right? But it but it's but you're assisting the death of hip hop, right? You putting the hand over the mouth when you're saying a hip hop artist because they're popular is no longer hip hop, right? Because what what happened is you you'll get a Beyonce album that'll be released under pop. Right, mm-hmm. won't be released on the R and B, and we'll still listen to it. But they are slowly moving it, moving the needle. Mm-hmm. Same way they've moved jazz, the same way they've moved rock and roll, same way they move disco, right? The same way they move house. Yeah, like now they're moving hip hop, and what happened is it'll become pop music. And what happened is you'll stop having, uh, you'll stop having majorly black artists do the music. Fact. Because the the sound has now been fully assimilated, right? Right. There's not many black artists doing rock and roll, right? There's not yeah. many black artists that's doing jazz, jazz. Yeah. <laughs> like anytime I, you know, I want to listen to jazz, I'm going to see Chris Bodie, right? Like, yeah. you know, there there isn't some, there isn't a black artist that's doing it. Winton Marcellus isn't really touring like that. So it, again, I, I don't I don't like it because it's like once again we create something and then now we're just handing it off. It's just being handed so, away. Uh, you know, my funny thing is most have said a. a a word that I think got drowned out that all hip hop purists, which most deaf is. Yeah. Um, they, they say this all the time. They, he used the word formative formulative. And I think that we have to understand that they understand the music executives understand that there's a formula to make a song. Yeah. A certain BPM, certain, like my favorite, one of my favorite stories is, um, Fetty Wap was doing a song and, uh, no, excuse me. Lil Duval was doing a song, and Lil Duval is it's the song uh, that he was di- that he did with Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah, he yeah, sent yeah. it to Charlemagne. Charlemagne was like, "Oh, yeah. let me see what Envy think." Envy said, "Yo, tell him to move it to this BPM. Just move the beat there." And yeah. He said, "Catch up to it." He said, "I promise you, he have a number one hit." And yeah. literally, it's an understanding. Now, when it comes to Drake, I'm gonna keep it real. I um. I think it's a reason why we don't listen to Drake as much as we used to back in the day. I think there's a reason why 
Drake's crowd is getting younger. I think there's a reason why the subject is getting younger as he gets older. I think it's all formative. I think that Drake understands that, hey, when I go sit in that office with the powers that be, they are going to make sure I do not fail. Why? Because I generate too much money for them. And I think some of that is, hey, no, you got to make a tussy slide. You got to make a God's plan and you got to make, you, you know, you look at it. Like I told y'all last time, I was listening to his last album and he literally got a song on there. What will Pluto do? I'm thinking, oh, he about to copy future because that's who he really <laughs> wants to be. It's about to be great. And he gets on there talking about, yo, my homeboy smash. So I want to smash her, too. And I thought about like, what age did we do that at? Yeah. And so, again, it, there, there is a formula, right? Yeah. But, but but there's also, you know, my whole thing is like we can't because we disagree with somebody. We don't have to diminish, you know, what they've done. Well, how do we feel about people who don't put name on bullets? Like if he would have said, yeah, I um, first of all, she asked him for Drake for a reason. I'm going to tell you something. I've sat with enough artists um, on smaller levels and you be around them. They'll tell you as soon as they come in the room. Oh, I don't want to listen to this person. I don't like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it's it is competition at the end of the day. It doesn't mean I hate them or I don't like them. I you know I just don't prefer their music. Cool. Bet we move past that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I say that. I, well, Cat I think Williams it. <laughs> well, no, my thing is, if he don't put a name on it, we still gonna know he's talking about Drake. It's gonna, it, first of all, it just comes off as hate. Well, it, uh, it's gonna come, it's gonna come off as Drake because he's the biggest hip hop artist in the world. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, <laughs> nonetheless, most Def was just hating. Yeah. And it comes off as old man hating, but at the same time, it's like, he ain't the first person to say this. A lot of people say stuff is pop. And I think, look, do I look at Drake and say, is he hip hop? I don't know. But I mean, yes. I hate, but, but again, I hate how labels move things over the pop, right? So, like, oh, for, yeah, so, yeah, so like, Taylor Swift has a song called Lavender Haze, right? When I mm-hmm. first, when that song first, when the beat drops on that, that song at first, I had no idea it was Taylor Swift, right? Mm-hmm. It, it was it was a hip hop house beat, right? Yeah. And I was just like, damn, this is this is And I, I I pull it up, I should jam it, and it's like Taylor Swift, and it's like pop, and I'm like. There's nothing pop about that song. Yeah, they're stealing everything. Yeah, you know, like, there's nothing pop about it. So, so again, I hate when we hand it to them. They're already going to take it, mm-hmm. right? So I hate, I hate when we just like, oh, well, let's just hand it to you, right? Drake's pop, like Drake. Drake is not pop, and I, and I, I think a big problem with Drake is the same problem that we run into when he, Floyd Mayweather, LeBron James, right? You you have you have you are so much better. To everybody else, and look, I find Drake problematic. I'm not the biggest Drake fan. Mm-hmm. I used to be, right? Yeah. But I still can't diminish like what the guy is, right? Like Taylor Swift, Christina Aguilera, I think is a better entertainer, a better performer, better singer, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> Taylor Swift is the biggest star, right? Facts. I can't take anything away from Taylor Swift and be like, well, Chris, Christina Aguilera is better. And I think it's the same thing when you look at like LeBron James, right? He's so much better than everybody else. Floyd Mayweather. He's so much better than everybody else. And I think Drake is suffering from the LeBron syndrome. He's just so much better than everybody else. Uh, Yeah, I mean, he is. I just look at Drake and say, yo, when you play those pop games, you get pop results. And I think what most Def was trying to do was to say, hey, there's a difference between hip hop and there's a difference between you know, hip hop, there was a difference between hip hop and rap. They merged them two together for one genre because we wasn't winning nothing. <laughs> but then it's yeah. like, yo, is he a pop artist? I think I think it was just a gray area that Shorty just baited him into. But she definitely baited him into But it. at the same time, that's on most depth because she she asked the question, you choose to give an answer. Well, and, and he can't work and, off and, nothing. And you don't most depth could have definitely, you know, he definitely could have said, like, you know, like, no, it's all hip hop. Yeah. Including half a pop is hip hop, right? We've influenced it all. And like that's like to me that's the answer, that's the answer that I like, right? But what do I always say, right? We we can't we can't be mad because we disagree with people, but we must be able to discuss the disagreements, right? I don't, I don't have to say I think most deaf suck because because <laughs> he don't. Uh, one of the first albums I bought was back in the day there, yeah. album, right? So I don't have to, and I think that's what we come to. I think people are like on the internet like. Drake has to suck because I support most Def. Or people that support Drake, like, most Def is a washed up old guy mm-hmm. because you hate Drake. And it's like, no, like, let, can can we disagree so we can get an understanding of, like, what's the point here? And the point that I'm that I am making is we're, we're losing. Like, our culture is keep being assimilated, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of us owning any parts of our culture. Like, we don't own any parts of our culture, man. Drake is part of the problem with that drake is part of the problem with that right <laughs> and i think that's what most them getting to yeah yeah Yo, but, this but, guy but you gotta is, say it though you got it because here's well, the thing because he is half black 
he was able to run in and play that part of it as long yeah. as he wanted to. Yeah, that and yo, most def was. I mean, I got the analogy. I just think it's old niggas hating, which is cool. But <laughs> I got the analogy. Is Drake commercial absolutely Drake? Like I laugh when everybody thought all the dogs was gonna be that hardcore. I'm rapping only throughout the album, and then everybody hated it. And Drake got so emotional that nobody liked his album. But it's like, bro. You're not rapping for us anymore. No. Nah. Like, if you want to hear, if most deaf want to hear hip hop, you got to go listen to Griselda. You got to go, Benny the Butcher album come out in two weeks. Go listen to it. You're going to hear the boom bap up, you know, New York type shit. Man, but you don't want to hear that. They, they got to they change that sound, man. It's so many guys that old from, from my era, old guys like myself, <laughs> that are coming out with albums. And I'm just like, bro, I want it just in 2002. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not, not, not 2023. What's your oh, thought? 2024, damn. What's your thoughts on Drake and Lil Baby hanging out with this little boy in the club? Uh, the little 11-year-old rapper? Yeah, whoever he is. They, I, I think they're being paid for it. Uh, I think Facts. I think it's corny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I this 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 kid, to to set a to set a young child down a trajectory of being um a thug when you don't have to. Like, the formula is out there for a child rapper to become a star, right? You got mm-hmm. Romeo, you got Lil Bow Wow, you have. Um, they ain't made no child rapper in a minute though. No, like, I mean they haven't, but 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 the formula is there. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, we, to have this kid basically putting on the persona of the caricature of a thug, I think it's it's, it's it's wild to me to have this to have this young you know 11 year old, 12 year old, however however old he is, yeah. out in the club, you know, out here with with, with hands full of money. Um, it's it's corny. It's corny. And and, and here's the thing. You could do that because whoever's trying to launch that that um, that child's career mm-hmm. is putting a lot of money behind them. I get that. All right. What I don't get is when you have grown men like that are you know influential like Drake and Little Baby partying with them. They could do the same thing with the, with the little man on the street, mm-hmm. with the little man in the studio. Yeah. Like this imagery of putting the putting the the, the little dude in the club. Why are we doing this? Yeah. Uh... I told Mike off mic, I'm like, it's a check being passed. I mean, we could do that. I, I guess, you know, whenever we want to victimize <laughs> black people, we label them little boys. And this guy, this boy is a little boy. He's an actual little boy, though. Yeah. And, you know, I think I got to that whole conversation with you uh, about how, like, me being a photographer, whenever there's art shows that are going to future Little uh, that's going to future black men. They always call him little boy, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like a little, little black boy. It's like the t- innocence. Yeah, and it's like it's that's a weird take for me. I know that's random, but you know, I looked at um this and I was just like corny. I mean, I don't get like, and I get what it is. It's just I get what it is, and I get what we need the internet to believe. Right. Yeah. So what it is is somebody is has a record label. This boy is signed to it. They're figuring out, yo, what's the quickest way for you to go from zero followers to a million overnight? The yeah. quickest way is we got to do some brown bag money exchanges yeah. with some rappers when they come to the city. And part of that is checking in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when they check in, we let them know, like, yo, we got somebody want to see you. You're gonna be safe, but you know what? We need you when you pull up to this club. It's gonna be a, a little kid in there, a little rapper who trying to get off. Blah blah blah. Check it. We're gonna do 30 seconds of a little video. That's it. And sometimes, you know, I feel bad because sometimes with these rappers, that's part of your check in. And yeah. it is much. And, and you know what? And I know we don't have this on the board because I don't want to get to it because it's real street shit. But like this whole thing with Yo Gotti and his family, like sometimes the the sometimes we got to recognize when something is real and when something is the Internet. Yeah. And sometimes the hard part of it is. We we can't dif- differentiate. And then the other part of it is, it's like. Yo, this kid's parents is allowing him to be outside. I, at this point, I think his parents running the label. Like, yeah. it's, it's, like, I'm yeah. like, it's no way you just hand your child over to somebody to, to go hang out in the streets at, at 12 o'clock at night. There's no way in hell you, you're doing that. And, so the parents got to be running the label. And you know what's funny is? The shortcuts don't help y'all get no further. Well, and, yeah, because it, it, here's the thing. It takes talent. And to go back to the Drake part, right, mm-hmm. where a lot of us hate, like, hate on Drake, right, it takes talent. To be where Drake is Oh facts Right you know what I'm saying Like this He's idea that talented. Drake work, Woke up And was just Drake That didn't happen Right Yo he had to put in the work So to your point When you do these shortcuts If you're not putting in the work You might get popular for a minute But you're not gonna have staying power I was laughing at some podcaster Who was crying on the, uh, the internet 
because she had paid uh, Skiller Baby, um, end up paying like 25 racks to get them on a podcast episode. Skiller Baby never showed up. Jeez. And I was just like, she got got, and she was telling her story about how she got got. Um, part of it was, hey, I gave the manager 10 racks. Uh, Skiller Baby hit me up and was like, yo, it's 12, and uh, it was 12 or 15 or whatever, paid that, and then nobody showed up. And it was just like, and then I was thinking about it, I'm like, damn. Where you get 25 racks for a guest, and this is not even, no disrespect to Skiller, baby, this is not no A-listed, it ain't no B-listed, this ain't no C-listed. This oh, ain't you, know, no, you know, when you got money like that, it's free money. That's well, how I used to call it. Well, street money. Yeah, it's free money. Yeah, I mean, so, we'll, yeah we don't say street money. It's oh, okay. free money. It's free money, man. Mike <laughs> wanted to dress it up for I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep y'all out the streets. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, no, the streets, it, here's the thing, there's no, there's no long-term gain in the streets. There's no retirement plan. There's no pension. Facts. So, I mean, I'll, I'll never glorify. I'll never, you know, sit here and, and brag about anything from the past. It's, it's, there is no glory, man. Like, I've seen way more people hurt from it than I've seen people become successful from it facts and none of y'all millionaires um last week there's an apology i don't think i'm apologizing am i apology no i ain't no, apologizing. No, I, I don't have anything to apologize yeah. for last um, week yeah fuck y'all um for, first thing though who did offer an apology was Lil Nas X I don't believe it uh, I, I I don't either. I now I do think I do think he caught more I think I think he caught a little bit more animus than what he was expecting for sure and good you think I know I, I I do think so I, I think he caught I think he caught a little bit more Flat than what he was expecting. I thought. I think he thought it would be funny because so many people don't like church now and don't like religion and mm-hmm. don't like conservatism. So I think a lot of that. I think he thought that like, oh, I'll just play into that. And you know, like, yo, people, people still like God, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, Christianity people, still is the yeah, biggest religion in the people world. People still like it, like you know. And I, so I do think that he probably was just like, whoa, like I, I wasn't expecting that. I think I don't think I don't think he was just trolling on this one. I think. I think he trolled and then he was just like, damn. Like, all right, y'all ain't let me breathe. And also, like, Lil Nas X has expressed dealing with mental issues. And I don't know why or how mentally fragile people keep getting tricked into the same trick. <laughs> um, because I've said it on here. I said it with Trey. I think he's a troll. I think he does this all the time. I think he started his career as a troll. And I think just like 6 9 his career will end as one as well. Um, and also, like the problem with trolling is, is when they want to cut your water off, it get cut off. Yeah, um, or when it's not funny, you know, like you know, trolling. Trolling only works if people know you're trolling. Yeah, right. So if people don't know that you're trolling, then and they take you serious, that's when you start getting the visceral reaction. And I'm not. Here's the thing. I don't. I don't want. I don't think anybody should die for any religion whatsoever because they disagree. Mm-hmm. But I do know that he would not. He would not play this. With those who would not be named on this pod, right? Because oh, no. he never, they, he, they wouldn't even distribute it. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Fact. And he'd never do this with, you know, Islamic folks. You know, if he did, he would never be able to go to Dubai a day in his life. Yeah. Right? Right. can't go there anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's like, you know, you, he played with us. You know, you he wouldn't do this in, in, when, you know, when, in Japan with the ancestors, right? Mm-hmm. Christianity was low hanging fruit. And I hate when people, you know, that you being a bully at that point, right? Like Lil Nas X was being a bully when it came to Christianity. Like, yo, I'm gonna play on y'all, you know, y'all religion on y'all Lord and Savior, and what are you gonna do about it? So, yo, the re- the, your reaction you get on the internet is the reaction. Um. Also, let me let me make something clear. I've come to learn that uh, I've been debating, man. I don't know. Twitter is such an interesting place because they're you either get the intelligent folks on Twitter, it's or you get this pool. <laughs> or you get like the nines. It's a um, Instagram is kind of the same, but it's like it just depends on who your followers are, right? Yeah. Um, now, if your followers push you out there to the universe, all the ignorance will show up. Yeah. Facebook, it's a little bit of racism over there. <laughs> Less sexism for me, but more racism. Um, and you don't, and it's fairly educated people. TikTok, everybody's stupid. I'm sorry, <laughs> no offense. I mean, it's just like you got to go find the intelligent people on TikTok, but. That does not uh, absolve me from setting up a poor debate in clips. Uh, <laughs> so last week we had this conversation about Stephen A. Smith and Jason Whitlock, and I made the comments that, hey, are black men responsible? Now, a lot of people got hung up because I used the example of Colin Kaepernick, um, and they thought that I was saying that, oh, all these sports commentators was not talking about. Uh, they they never mentioned Cap. Yeah. Uh, 
I watch sports every day. We've talked about Shannon and matter of fact, let me put it like this. I understand it's a clip, so I understand none of y'all saw this. It was too many videos of us talking about Shannon's and Skip's takes on versus Stephen A takes on Cap for us to not have watched sports uh, TV. <laughs> so I'm not even getting there. My conversation that I was trying to have was uh, my big conversation is if Stephen A was cool with going five years of ignoring Jason Whitlock as he kicked so many black people's back ends, whether that was because of a check, whether that was because of, yo, he's not worth my my time. Please do not give us an hour long podcast today randomly because yeah. he said, yo, you didn't write your book. Yeah. I mean, I get it. But, yo, you know, one of my favorite things, I think I've told this story on here plenty of times. My mom saw me laughing with a girl picking on somebody. And my mom said, yo, don't be mad at her when it's your time. <laughs> yeah. No, that's real. And, yo, fuck her today. <laughs> Cause it was my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that's 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 real. And and here's the, I mean, I don't know why Stephen A. Smith went in on Whitlock the way he did because he just said that he didn't write his book. I mean, hell, most autobiographies are written by a writer and Facts. not you know the person themselves. So I guess you know Stephen A. Smith. Because here's the thing: if I worth ten million dollars, man, and I work as much as Stephen A. Smith works, Stephen A. Smith, I'm not saying you didn't write your book. But what I am saying is that you're busy as hell. You may, I said 10 million, I think he's at 18 million dollars a year now. You make probably over 20 million dollars a year. Um, You're busy as fuck. When are you writing? Like, it wasn't an invalid question. Now, I wasn't going to defend Whitlock because fuck Jason Whitlock. Um, (laughs) But it, it was funny for that to happen when I think that's, it wasn't an unfair, that's the, that's the crazy part. I don't like Whitlock, but it wasn't an unfair take. You know, when you nah. look at how much, you know, Stephen A. Smith works, I mean, yeah, now he could he could be writing every time he's on a private jet, could have been working on this for the last five years. Could be. But it wasn't it wasn't an unfair take. Nah, but yeah, like you said, Jason Whitlock can kiss ass. Yeah. Um, Ruby Rose sat down in the podcast. Do you want me to play this? I, are we, do we, yeah, I guess I we can't play it. Yeah, I got it. Hold on. Where's she at, man? Where's she, where Ruby at, man? How pretty so. She is pretty. The decision, yeah, to start what she during treatment? COVID during the pandemic. Huh? For for what reason? Because you, my you, ex did it. DDG. He started it first, mm, and he told me to do it. Oh, he got a kid. He did. Congratulations <laughs> to them. Congrats. And yeah. How, so how does anyway, that make you feel? I I love children, and he has been wanting a child, so I think that's lovely for them. But no, no, like, no ill feelings. Absolutely not. It's a baby. So he started. He convinced you, right? Yeah. He was like. Like people had been telling me to do it because I would like twerk on Instagram for fun. So Ruby Rose was told by DDG, who is Halle Baby, uh, baby, Holly <laughs> Bailey's uh, baby daddy. Uh, why is this news? I don't know why it's news, but why? You know, I, I like I like how they kind of you know slyly tried to get her to bash DDG and big up to Ruby Rose for you know protecting her ex and being like, nah, I don't have anything bad to say about him. Like, yeah. yo, I was I was twerking on Instagram for free. This man was like, yo, you should set up OnlyFans. And the rest is history. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah, the rest is history. So uh, I, I do think that there's, you know, I, I do think that we should say the quiet part out loud. What's that? Um, that DDG is <laughs> chilling with the young lady that has a more reserved, conservative look. Well, and, upside, high upside. Yeah. Higher upside, Way and high. not with the young lady that's twerking on Instagram. And now, you know, I I, I can't defend DDG too much because he hasn't married either one of those women, so it's, it's still an out of wedlock baby. But it does seem like you know he's interested in a family on one side. Facts, and I I think this goes into what men say all the time. It's like you know you have you have the lady that you would want to hang out with and have fun with, mm. and then you have the one that you would want to settle around and have children with. I think this is a Prime example, you know, the one that has the OnlyFans and the one that plays Little Little Mermaid. <laughs> Facts. I think it is hilarious. Um, shout out to y'all getting these pretty girls on these podcasts, man, and, <laughs> and and using all the SEO in the world to get clicks because that was the most boring ass clip it, it of was, all time. It, it, it was it was definitely terrible, but uh, I love the way that she did, like she did not go in on him. She basically. She spoke very, very highly of him, despite the fact he's moved on. He's with somebody else. I mean, what you supposed to do with your ex? Do you talk trash about your exes? I don't talk trash about any ex that I don't. I've ever been with. I just follow them to make sure they get fat. <laughs> my, a lot of my exes still look good, so I can't really. Hate. Hey, look, man, I'm I'm watching, I'm uh, waiting, uh, waiting. Uh, nah, I, I want I, I want them all. I want them all to do well. I want them all to do well. Ruby uh, Rose, she, 
I would love to hang out with her at Ash Cash. That would be like my Why? ideal, like hang out. I can't trust party. nothing she say, especially after homeboy came out and said, "Yo, the OnlyFans stuff is bullshit." I wasn't. Because I, mean, I mean, I'm not. I'm not paying for the OnlyFans. It's just like she ain't gonna hang out with you then. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking about as, as friends, like not as a client. Sex workers don't hang out with friends. No, they. they do, that's they, the they, lie they, they tell y'all. They, they had no. That's a lie they tell their clients. They just, sex workers, sex, dude. Sex workers are cool. Sex workers are cool. Man. Sex. Let me tell y'all for all who are out there, I'm about to save y'all at least ten grand this year. You're not gonna save anything, man, because that's the, that's all they got. Sex workers do not hang out with friends. No, they don't hang out with clients. You're either a John or you're their friends. <laughs> so, yeah, they don't hang out with clients. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. They don't know that yet. They yeah. don't hear it. So they thinking, yo, if I pay her, she's going to oh, be, she my be my friend. friend. Yeah, no, and no, it one, doesn't work yeah, that way. You are officially a John. Yeah, it's like it's like a drug dealer, right? Your drug dealer is never your it's never your friend, right? Facts. They shouldn't be. It's just your weed. Just just your weed, man. That's Please. all he is. That's all he is. <laughs> um, Cameron is walking around uh, with a picture of a woman on his crotch who is believed to be Melissa Ford. Um, he came they out. They are really beefing. They are really taking this thing. Like pods are really going to beef in twenty twenty four. Pod wars, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, it's pod wars. Ari Lennox just started up one with Joe Budden. Said, that do, we, do we do we have a do we have a, a, a an opponent? <laughs> do we have an opponent? <laughs> if you if you're a pod out there, you'd like to be our opponent. Uh, we go, we gonna do fake beef. We're not gonna do a real beef. Yeah, because y'all numbers ain't numbering. <laughs> Mike, try me. <laughs> And he knows this is me trying to be better in 2024 because Mike already know how I feel about you niggas. Oh, and Mike man. knows I do all the numbers. Pod wars. Okay, but anyway, Cameron got oh, allegedly not male Ford. Yeah, <laughs> on, his on, on his crotch. Um, <laughs> the fact that it's not her is whack. The fact that it was her, or we believe, everybody who with the eyes believe it's her is whack. <laughs> I think it's just I think it's just corny. Um, yeah, he's from New York. That's what they do. Well... I love New York. Shout out to New York. I'm coming up there soon. I just feel like it's corny because it's like, first of all, it's not even a cool fashion thing. It's not. It's it's really not. And then if it's Melissa Ford, I know what she said, what she said. I know Melissa Ford is, Melissa Ford has come out and say she does not like when y'all label her as unaccountable. I'm going to leave that there. Yeah. Um, but she don't deserve it. And I think it's, I think it's, you do, you know, one of the hardest things of, uh, navigating the internet is yo. I do not want to fight with women. You men never look good fighting with women. You <laughs> never the look good. I, I don't want to fight. I, as I tell you, I, I I don't want it. Like that. It's it's one side of the internet. I just refuse to engage with. Uh, no, you got three. Yeah, <laughs> I, I grew them all together. Oh, okay, I grew them all together. <laughs> like this is just, I just don't. I refuse to engage with that side of the internet. So it's there because there's no win. There, there, there is no win even, over there. Even if you win, even if you, you right, there's no win. It's like it's no. So, even if they say you right, when we come back in five years and look at it, yeah, it's going to look bad. You know, yeah. only you know, only women can erase their past. Um, Issa Rae, you remember that clip? They found like her book when she was saying something about black women and Asian. Yeah, and Asian. Right? Yeah. How old was that? I mean, I don't think it's really that old. I think it was. I think it was pre her show, right? Okay, and I remember. Yeah. So the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I remember when she went on the Breakfast Club. I'm I'm pretty sure that is, and I remember Charlemagne pressed her about that, and his question to her was like, "Yo, like, how could you say that?" And then you make such a black show as insecure. And you know what's funny? Issa Rae got up there, she apologized, and you know her thing was was like, "Yo, when I was younger, I did feel certain ways, and I've outgrown those feelings, and you get to grow, and you." You get to, you know, your opinion change, your feelings change, and you see things differently. And it's cool to feel like that, but it's also smart to recognize that that shit don't work with everybody. Well, I mean, again, to, to your point, only um, only the women really get to get away with it. So I'm trying to see, when did she write that book, Issa Rae book? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the book that came out before Insecure. Because I remember they was on her about that in... And I think, you know, it's funny to hear see her say that. Um, and then Chad Johnson said something similar, like making babies only with like certain types of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, so here's the thing. If you say it, it's yours. You're going to have to own it. Um, sh- dude, this was released in 2016. I thought it was older than that. Yeah, that makes sense. Good Lord. That's probably right before Insecure dropped. And, and she still was able to get this off? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't popular then. <laughs> I don't think they found the book to have to insecure. Yeah, but I mean, you know, like, dude, we would get so washed if we said something like this. 
All right, so here, here, here's a segment from the book. This is why I propose that black women and Asian men join forces in love, marriage, and procreation. Educated black women, what's what better intellectual match for you than an Asian man? And I'm not talking about Filipinos. Wow. They're like the blacks of Asians. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. Um, oh, that is wild. You know, I never knew what she said Ooh. when Charlamagne questioned her. And I was just like, I wonder what the fuck what? she said. But I wasn't about to go look, read her shit. What? <laughs> but you know what? Only um, only ladies could get this off, bro. Hey, I, could you imagine if a man said that? I, I won't even repeat it because somebody clip it. I'm going to get banged, even though I'm. Quote somebody else. I'm going to have to find a new host. <laughs> uh, the U.S. said they think about jailing uh, homeless folks. Uh, that That is insane to me because if we jail home, homeless folks, who's you, paying for the homeless folks? Us. Us. How about we just build them I, tiny How about homes? we just build them a tent city and let them, and we pay for that too instead of having them in jail. That, man, that's how you know that jail is such a business and that's how you know like it's lobbyists behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. That be, because that, that case is going to the Supreme Court. Bro, and I, man, we just made a leap here. We literally have just went from talking about this array <laughs> to the Supreme Court. It's in it's insane range on this thing. Look, pod. man. Well, speaking of the Supreme <laughs> Court, uh, I I, don't, I have zero to say about Biden and Kamala. They are starting they p- pandering early because I think they really about to realize they about to go against Trump again. Yeah, and I mean, look, if Joe Biden want the black vote. What he needs to do is basically say, I mean, first off, he's gonna get seventy five percent of the black vote off. Yeah, so, rip. yeah, so it's like, all right, so if he wants to remain at 15%, um, that'll help him win. Even though I think he should beat Trump, I don't think this should be hard. Trump isn't really that great of a candidate, neither is Joe Biden to all y'all Trump supporters <laughs> that are listening. But if, if only thing he, he really says, like, yo, like, yo, we get back in office, we really gonna fix the student loan uh, reform thing, which is all I need. I, I, this is all I need fixed. This is all I freaking need. And here's the thing I'll pay back what I borrowed. Just get rid of the freaking interest, right? Mm. Or give me a negative fucking interest rate or match what I pay when I pay into it. Like, yo, give me some. I don't even need you to wipe it out, man. Just like the, the interest is freaking ridiculous. And yeah. put something up so when people buy houses that like whatever they're paying in student loans that you got, that, that the government will give something back somewhere else. Anyway, just fix that. I don't care about nothing else. I don't need you to do any, you know, black legislation. Because you're not going to do that, and it's disingenuous when you do it, and it's half done every time you try it anyway. Facts. Uh, I don't have student loans, so it doesn't bother me. However, my wife does. Erase them <laughs> shits. Or if you could do me one better, just discredit Johnson & Wales <laughs> and delete that, delete her shit ASAP. I mean, I, I think they should. I think they should, honestly, you know, just... Reset, just press the reset on student loans in general. Facts. We can afford it. It, it. It's nothing but a bun. The only thing you, the government gonna do is write it off and sell that shit to the goddamn Saudis and the Chinese and the Japanese and the Russian oligarchs anyway. Sell them our student loan debt. Facts. Get it off of us, man. Get it off of us. Shout out to our favorite segment of the day, the sports segments, where all the ladies skip ahead. <laughs> um, first off, the Cowboys lost. Yeah, the NFC East is obviously the cupcake division of the NFL this year. Um, goodness, y'all suck. Y'all was ass. That was amazing. That, that, like the, the way that the Eagles and the Cowboys showed up, folded. <laughs> like, good lord, guys. Yeah, that was that was terrible. I was debating with Ryan was a uh, CJ Stroud a top five quarterback this year. Uh, you or know is what? he top five in the league? I mean, I, I don't know if he's top five in the league he yet because this is his first year. Um, but yo. The, Kid can play, man. Oh, the kid can definitely play. Can Carolina, play. I don't know. <sighs> Boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you was a Panther fan Me? Saturday, you probably just turned the game at the halftime. Oh, yeah. You I, probably, ain't watch it. I ain't watch it. <laughs> like, I'm not watching this. Mm-mm. <laughs> Only thing I do is put my money on CJ Stroud, and I don't yeah, watch the game because yeah, I know he's going to give me what I need. The, the, boy, the boy can ball, man. Um, What's up with the coach changes, man? Uh, Here, how, how about this, though? Why <laughs> why is Eric Bieniemy not getting a head coach and sniff again? Cuz the whatever Eric Bieniemy did, he got on something. We somebody. need to know. Right? Because because at this point it seems like it's racist and maybe it's not racist. Maybe he actually did something. Bro. <laughs> maybe he did like we need we we need to know. We will not judge the brother for it. Glad he can keep a job. But the, if y'all could keep hiring Josh McDaniel, who the moment he left the Raiders, the Raiders became a competent football team. Bruh, it's amazing. Like like Antonio Pierce takes over the same team in the middle of the season. Same team. And the Raiders look night and day different than under Josh McDaniel. He loses the quarterback. Yeah, it loses <laughs> like loses the quarterback. Like, like, bruh, whatever Eric Benby did, we need to know. We need y'all to let us know because at this point it just seems racist. He might have did what uh 
He made it. He had to do something similar. He had to. He. I mean, it had to be like the coaches, like like wife and um, mistress and oh. daughter. Like, <laughs> he, had, he had to be everybody at the same time. Like this is insane. Hey man, welcome to Wade County, where Wade is getting a statue. Let's go Heat. Um, well deserving. I don't know. Maybe I take that back. Is it well deserved? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a Heat fan, D, D- Wade. I mean, D Wade's one of the top shooting guards of all time, man. I mean, you he know, top three. Shooting guard, let's see, uh, Jordan, Kobe, Jerry right. West. Oh, you like the white man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's the logo. Uh, I, I, would put, I would put D Wade, he would definitely be in the top. He's top five. Seven. Of what? Shooting guards? Shooting guards, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not six more shooting guards better than him. No, I said, I, top, I said top seven. No, it's not. So it's it's no more. I'm not putting him above. Jer- I'm not putting Jerry West above him. But if you do, he's at yeah, four. He's, Jerry West is definitely headed. I mean, is Curry a point guard or a shooting guard? He's a point guard. Okay. And so. then AI, I'm going to throw him in shooting guard because y'all won't pick and choose. But he's. Hey, AI broke the mold. Hey, there's no Steph Curry if there's not if there's no Allen Iverson. Yeah, it's a lot the, of. Yeah. The, well, a lot of these people is he AI. First, sons. He was the first, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the first combo guard. Um, but yeah. wait, is he right there at, at three or four? Uh, yes. Yeah, Five or six. I'm a Heat fan. I, he's six. He'd be six. Who? So who? All right. So you putting AI above him? I know you ain't got AI. Above. I have put AI above. All right. D-Wade. So that's four. Then who's five? Jerry West. No, you already said Jerry West at three. Yeah. We, we said okay. We said Jordan, Kobe, Kobe, Jerry West, Jerry West, AI, AI. Oh it's, yeah, it's D Wade then. Yeah, yeah. I'm not putting him. He's yeah. three in my book. It's but D-Wade. um, you know, I think it's cool. I think that um, the statue was. Such a, you know, it's funny. I was listening to um my guy Jalen Rose. He was talking about how we think statues just go out to everybody just because the Lakers have so many, <laughs> and we don't realize that they are such a huge yeah. deal. And um, I'm glad he's getting one. You yeah, know what I'm saying? No, well deserved, man. Well like, deserved. No, nobody expect D Wade to come out of Marquette and be the guy that he was. I mean, shit for like three seasons. You know, you was looking forward to Kobe playing D Wade. Facts. Like for about three seasons, you was just like. Shh. Well, I, I got to stay up for this. First five seasons of D-Wade's career, you was questioning, was he going to be better than Kobe? Like, that's what type of time he was for, on. Yeah, for, yeah, for about three years, you was like, you know. he was amazing. But that um, greatness come from, like, you know, can you extend it for 15 years? Yeah. So, um, But it brings me to this question is, I know Curry is getting a statue. Curry, yeah, I'm here to. Definitely get one in Golden State. Curry, you are getting a statue. I'm yeah. letting you know that right now. At one point in time, I thought Clay and Draymond might get one with you. <laughs> Um, I don't know about Draymond no more and Clay. I don't know, but man, you definitely y'all getting y'all jersey retired tonight. But the biggest question I have is, do LeBron James get a statue? What do you mean? Do he get a statue? You mean where does he get a statue? Was he getting one in Miami? Because I don't think it's so. No, no, he's not getting one in. Miami. Is he getting one in L.A.? Perhaps. I mean, perhaps. <laughs> what has he done there? He's he's setting every NBA record there, and he's the reason Set- why they. Sell tickets. That ain't a Lakers thing. That's just a. And he got it. He he did get him a title. A bubble. They, which most players said was the hardest they have ever played in their life. They are liars. <laughs> they, they're, so they're liars when, when they say, you know, it's the hardest they ever played. But well, they're not liars. They well, say. we watched the Clippers quit. The Nuggets quit. We watched so many teams go in there and quit so they can go home. Yeah, but, I mean, which I mean, which I'm saying makes it hard. So he does he does have a Lakers title. He, he won, got a Lakers title. He won the first inaugural, which I don't count that. Whatever the mid season tournament is, it depends on how far they go this year. But he is about to set, you know, all the like NBA records. You know, yeah. while he's in a Laker uniform, I think he gets a Cleveland statue. No so doubt. So here's my thing for the for the LeBron fans who are crying right now, Ryan. <laughs> um, my thing is. He gets one in Cleveland. I just want to know if the NBA is going to make Dan Gibbert do it. Are I they mean, going to go to him and he's like, yo, I do, you don't do this. I, like, like they, it's their, it wasn't, isn't it their first title ever? Like, did they get one during the 50s or 60s or some shit? Yeah, yeah. It was like their first one in like 70 years. Yeah, or yeah. Bullshit. So it's like, no, nah, man. You, you, he he definitely gets one in Cleveland. And yeah, it's I Cleveland. hope so. Cleveland has no championships like at all. Like, yeah. yeah. No, but, he deserved one. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. like, damn, yeah, I hope he, he get he'll, one. He'll get one. He'll get one in Cleveland. I think Giannis might end up getting one. In Milwaukee, no, yeah. I, like I'm looking at teams like them. Like Giannis might Giannis, slip up Giannis, and get one. Giannis will get one. KD, I'm here to let you know you would not be getting a statue. <laughs> KD buddy. would not be getting a statue. Nowhere. <laughs> uh, your best bet is only way KD you getting a statue. You got to go back to OKC with them young boys and win. And SGA is balling his ass yeah, off, so they not giving up nobody for you. He, he's not. He's not going. He's, he's your jersey gonna get retired, but that's about it. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Westbrook. What Y'all, Westbrook do? I love you, Westbrook. I think you're amazing. Um, 
I like everything you stand for. You let me know that you are about being a black man. You I like I like know. I like Westbrook, the black man for sure, the black husband for sure. I think outside when it comes to families, I think LeBron James is number one for me, and Westbrook is number two. Yeah, yeah. Um, just the I way argue that. Um, LeBron, I understand that there's a persona on the court and one off the court. Westbrook. And so I, I'm not taking no shot at LeBron when I say this. Westbrook lets me know he's willing to die for his anytime, <laughs> any moment, any place. And I do believe that comes with being living in L.A., seeing a lot that goes on around there. Um, but, however, Westbrook, I'm here to ask you just to chill, bro. Um, what do you do? A fan was talking trash, as fans do. I've been oh, to an NBA yeah. game. I don't know about you. You're a little mature. You were older than mature than me, but I've been to an NBA game and I've yelled at players. Yeah, now, I, I don't. I, I've done. That. I don't believe in calling nobody out their name. Um, because yeah. I was old enough to see Malice in the Palace in real time, <laughs> right? I don't believe in calling nobody names. I don't throw anything. Yeah. I'm talking basketball trash, and I do understand that if me and you play one on one, it will not be close. You could spot me six points, we go to seven, and I will. These lose. are pretty big human beings, so in general, Facts. so it's not it's not many things that we're going to be doing that's going to be close. Absolutely, if it comes to physicality and. For a fan to be talking to Westbrook, and Westbrook said, yo, come say it to my face. And I'm going to tell you, this man got up, and he walked his little ass down there, and he said whatever with a grin on his face to Westbrook's face. Yeah. I, and Westbrook I, I, started talking even more trash and told him to go sit his ass down. And for me, it's like. Man, call security, bro. Like, like well, security's I, 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 yeah, right there. Yeah, like, yo, bro, call security and just be like, yo, bro, I'm going to get your escorted out of here. Yeah. Like, to me, that's more of a flex than. Me physically, you know, saying I'll do something to you, right? If I could just be like, yo, hey, can you get this can you get this person out of here? And you know the and, sad part for me is yeah. Westbrook ain't teaching them no lesson. No, because because now you're giving them memories and and if you actually do hit them, it's gonna cost you money. Too much. <laughs> so it's like there's I mean, again, as men, we gotta understand like, yo, what does a win look like? What woo? Right. What, what is what, yeah? What does the look like, man? Yeah. Like, look, because yeah, the lesson that Westbrook wants to teach this this dude is in a back alley somewhere. Yeah. Where nobody sees, and they you know they security cameras are magically down. Yeah, I mean that's the lesson. Because yeah. when that dude sees you, he walks past you. Exactly. It's like anytime they see you in the street, they're gonna walk past you. So. Or ask for a picture. Yeah. Like the, 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 to me, the flex is you call on security and be like, "Yo, man, I'm gonna get you put out of here." Like, "Yo, shut up for real." Right. You got one more time. You got one more time, man. I'm going to call security. Matter of fact, you need to root for me from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Um, last take, man. Um, Mike's favorite podcaster. Why Ruby Rose uh, OnlyFans on my page? Hold on, man. Yeah, why is Ruby Rose OnlyFans on your page? She ain't ugly. She's not ugly. She is a very attractive there. woman. Here's Up to boy. the point of him. All right, here we go. The more stable job. My dad had his own company, and his money would always be going up and down, and there's always be fights. Mm. And there was sort of a respect thing that wasn't quite there up to the point of him dying. Like, the amount of disrespect that I saw my mom give my dad during his final months on this earth is the reason why we don't have a relationship. Do you know that that's what you, you're telling my story right now? Really? My father died. Yesterday was his birthday. Yeah. My father died. And the way that my mother treated my father, I go to see my mother uh, in earlier in January of this year. My mother is at a hospital in a rich white area in a bed mm-hmm. by herself. My father died and left her everything. She has her bills paid off. Mom had the more stable job. He never would have had. And the way she treated him makes me not be able to see her. Yeah. Now that that isn't. Uh, it me, makes yeah, me, me, it me go through the same thing right it now. It makes yeah. me see her. Yeah. I I don't want to be angry with you, but I watched this man give you everything, and you yes. didn't. Or from my estimation, yeah. I will never see you. And then and then you cried when he died, and it was so insulted to me. Mm. I I can't yeah. reconcile it in my mind. Yeah, I don't even call her mom anymore. I call her Allah. Well, I have to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's because I don't. Shit. Yeah, I mean, listen. Definitely. I remember this one time. My dad was in the hospital. Um, what's your feelings on this? I think it goes back to your dad tip of the week of uh, making sure you have peace in your home. Mm-hmm. And I, I and I think that's, that's a perfect way to wrap up. You know, the segment is that you know, 
the emotional labor of men is often unnoticed, right? And um, Vlad is definitely not my favorite podcaster. Probably my <laughs> least favorite podcaster. <laughs> I was being funny, y'all. <laughs> but but the idea that that he's saying he he's making a statement, right? And then mm-hmm. DL is also relating to the statement because people forget that DL. I think DL what, didn't know who his real father was until like shit, damn near recently. Mm. Right, and then um, you know you have Tyler Perry's story. You know Tyler mm-hmm. Perry has a very very similar story. Um, you have Kirk Franklin that has a very 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 similar story, and these stories of how men feel. Right, these aren't men that feel away because their dads have done something to them. Most of their dads were active or wanted to be active. Right. Yeah. These men are suffering because their fathers did not properly vet the right woman. See, y'all thought I was gonna blame the chicks, didn't you? <laughs> but their fathers didn't really vet the right woman. So these are grown men. Vlad is in his 50s. Dale's in his 60s, right? Mm-hmm. They're reminiscing. Kirk Franklin is telling the stories. He's in his 50s. Yeah. Tyler Perry is telling the story. He's in his 50s. And y'all know how I feel about once you're like 35 plus and you're still dealing with stuff from your childhood, right? But I get some people that's dealing with it. But I think the most important thing is like as men, right, that may not suffer from what these men suffer from, Right. Is there a way that we can prevent our sons from ever suffering from what all these men suffer from? Like, like there's a point in there where Vlad actually chokes up. Yeah. Because of how his mother was treating his father. Mm-hmm. And then I think that you, if you actually look at like sometimes how as men, you know, if men are not married. Right. Or men don't get married or men have these these marriages where they're not the best of men. Like how much of that is, is stemming from the fact of how they saw their fathers being treated. So it's one of those things where I just thought I thought it was a good place to like hear men, older men, men that are older than us talk about like, hey, how them watching their fathers be treated affects them. Because we never really have that conversation. We've never had a conversation nah. of, yo, I saw my dad be treated like a dog and that's affecting me as a man. Yeah. You know, um, yo, this is why I don't believe in dating broke women. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I had to. <laughs> As soon as I saw the clip in the outline, I said, oh, that's why I don't date brokies, bro. That's why I did not marry a non-working broke woman. Um, and I'll tell you why. Uh, <laughs> Mike knows because Mike grew up in an era right before mine. But we watched our grandparents, uh, women work all the women not work. They worked at home all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. And we saw our grandfathers, our great grandfathers work. Work to death, literally work to death. I yeah. don't, and I don't think people understand what that really looks like. No, um, they don't. You know, sixty hours a week, up four or five o'clock in the morning. And and let's be let's be clear. Yeah, your dad had a full time job, yeah. and he preached exactly. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. I'm letting anybody know that that, that is crazy. That's insane. Uh, my grandfather was a nurse. He worked in a hospital, and he preached. Yeah, and you know he was a uh, he owned property, so he's. You know, a landlord, he was doing stuff and to watch it. And then, you know, you watch women, um, their wives or whoever you watch your grandfather, you watch your great grandmother sit at home. And I'm and that is a full time job. I'm not taking that away. But what happens is once you are about to check out, people scramble, people get scared because they don't know what to do. Well, well, and also, right. The you know, is there an appreciation? Mm, right. Facts. So like, so, so, so if you, if you bust your ass to take care of your family and your family loves you for that mm-hmm. as a man, that's going to feel a lot different. Mm-hmm. Right. D- DL and Vlad are talking about their dads busting their ass. Mm-hmm. And like, there, there was a point in there where, where, where um, uh, DL was like, his father was dying and, um, his, his wife had said, you know, he was like, he wanted to see his kids and his wife was like, well, they ain't his kids anyway. Mm. Like right, imagine being sick or dying, and then you know your your woman is like, "Well, that's not your child anyway." Like, yeah. And sad part <laughs> is, Vlad is talking about yo, my mom, my dad had two days left to live. My mom was bringing him bills to have paid. Yeah, and, and, it, it, and, and it wasn't even bills, right? It was yeah. just it was her idea of how to stress this man out because it's fun to her. And I and again, it's one of or those she that, don't know. I ain't gonna say it's fun to her. Or no, no, it, it has to be fun because if you if if the other person. Is not enjoying it and you keep doing it, it's a reason there. Well, maybe it's not fun. I think some of it is, yo, I don't know what I'm scrambling. I don't know what's about to happen. I've seen people, I can't put on somebody, yo, killing you is fun. Tut, I bruh, can't. Bruh, I can't put that. Don't you I, watch all these murder docu series and these cult docu series? Yeah, you but think I, these cult leaders are not having fun. 
No, I think some of them is drugged up. <laughs> like, I said that last episode. Like, I just, I, and I'm not trying to, sh- I ain't shooting them some bail, but yeah. what I'm looking at is I do see people don't realize like, oh shit, I'm stressing out somebody who's about to die because I'm selfish. I think some of us just come from being selfish that, yo, what am I about to do once they gone? How am I going to survive? I've never worked before. Yeah. What the hell is going to happen? So I ain't going to say it's fun. I do believe it's a love, so much of a love for self that you so selfish. And I think that's what really hurt DL and Vlad is like, yo, our mom was so selfish. DL, even until, Vlad, Kurt, yeah, Tyler. My, my mom was so selfish yeah. to the death. Yeah, of this man, and and it's like as as men, do you understand that you have to protect yourself from that from that energy? Right, there's nothing mm. wrong with a woman adoring you, respecting you, and celebrating you, bro. Like if she's not hitting that shit, you're going to run into what these men are running into, or what these men, excuse me, what these men fathers ran into, right? Yeah. Because if a woman adored you, bro, she she's like, yo, I'm not I'm not bringing that to him right now, right? Mm-hmm. If she respects you, she's like, yo, I'm not going to say that. I don't care how I feel. I figure this out. You know, I figure it out, right? If she if she celebrates your wins, bro, she's not going to want to see the look in your face when you disappointed. If you know, what I'm saying, if you don't think you can win, it's just it. You have to you have to, and, and I get it. It's hard, right? Like in this environment, there's there. To your point, right? There's such a love for self. And like even when I talk to guys, man, I'm like, yo, when when you think about the woman that you want to be with, bro, do not consider what she could do for you, right? Mm. Look at what you could bring, what you bring into a woman's life, right? Be mm-hmm. like, I'm this type of guy. This is how I treat my woman. I want my woman to feel like this, this, and this. If you become that guy and you and you're with the woman and you give her all that and you're not getting any of it back, the thing the first thing that you realize is like, yo, I I'm being depleted in energy. And what you'll do is cut her off. You'll just Facts. cut her off. You want you don't have to be mean. You don't have to be dismissive. You're just like, yo, you're not, you're sapping energy away, right? And I need a reciprocity. So as a guy, I'm just always saying, like, yo, give give everything, man. Like, yo, be overflowing when it comes to your woman. Like, don't even consider what a woman could do for you. And you know what's sad, um, before we hop up out of here. Um, look at all those guys you name and look how look at their relationship was with women now. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and it's it, sad. Yeah, and here's the thing: all the men we're talking about are super successful men, right? Mm-hmm. There's also a bunch of regular guys that are suffering from the same thing that yeah. didn't have the power to push through or be able to use, you know, the, the bad as motivation, to, you know, for the good. So that's, I mean, again, it goes back to the dad tip of the week, man. Like, yo, you have to be able to find peace in yourself and not destroy yourself. Like, Facts. don't hit the self destruct button. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. What you got planned this weekend? I don't have anything planned, man. Watch this playoff football. Go 49ers. Y'all going to win? Yep. Who y'all play? Uh, Packers. Ooh. Yeah. Nah, Ooh. Going to pack, pack them up they nicely. Gon- Look. Send them back to Green Bay. Simone will be able to go to... Um, Go take a quick vacation before she do the Summer Olympics in Paris. <laughs> this man said, I'm about to send your man back to you. That is <laughs> wild. That is a wild take. And pause that. Sorry. Uh, look, man, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Go on YouTube. Do everything. Please like, subscribe, uh, follow. Send it to your friends. Send it to the person you hate. Send this to your ops. Please do something. And with that, we're going to holler at y'all next time. Holler at your boy.